Hello, I'm Molly Lalone, the Executive Director for the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority. This is May's DDA Power Hour for our businesses, and we have with us today Interim Police Chief Todd Stanfield, and he is going to talk about the festivals happening this summer and what the street closures will be. Morning. Hi, Todd. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Okay, so I know we got the Memorial Day Parade coming up here on, mon on Monday. Um, mm -hmm. Today, in between today and tomorrow, the DPW will be setting out all our traffic cones and barricades that's going to happen. And basically for our street closures for this event will basically be uh, West Flint from Broadway and then North Broadway to Shadbolt. So there will be no parking allowed on those streets. Uh, the officers will be putting traffic cones in parking spaces about 530 in the morning. Um, and then after that, we'll be putting up barricades, which we call it Type 3, which is the very tall barricades. Uh, in our downtown district, so we shut, we're squaring off our downtown area to shut it off completely so we won't have no eastbound traffic into the parade route or coming northbound from the Y uh, on South Broadway. Uh, we'll also have patrol cars at intersections also to help people redirect like if they're trying to get someplace. Uh, the officer there will you tell the officer where you want to go and he'll help you to get around the, all our barricades to get to where you got to go so we're not disrupting the people's lives as okay. much as possible all right and the memorial day parade um happens this this sunday right this, it's monday this on monday the 29th, yes this monday and they're going to gather at blanche sims elementary yes and then march down there and then go yep they'll across come blanche. they'll start from blanche sims uh, the parade starts at 11 o'clock okay uh they'll come south on florence street all the way up to east flint they're going to make a right hand turn and they're going to head west on west on east flint Coming towards downtown. Com coming down towards downtown. And when they get down to the downtown intersection here at underneath the traffic light at Broadway, they're going to make a right-hand turn and continue up North Broadway all the way up to Elizabeth and then stop at the Eman Center, the old Eman Center. By the, where the two parking lots are. Where the two parking lots are. High so, school. yep. And we'll have that shut down too as well, down by Walgreens, so we're not getting any incoming traffic to let people disembark from any floats, cars, okay. or things, or, or parents pick up their children. Okay, and the road closures, those are safety measures so that the pedestrians who are in the parade are safe. Oh, absolutely. That's our biggest concern is make sure everything is safe for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, so we all have officers at every intersection. So if there's something going on, there's an officer there to assist uh, the citizens. Or if something else happens, they can let the next officer know, hey, look for this or look for that. Okay. And um, what are the major organizations who are involved in the Memorial Parade? Do you happen to know? Uh, I do not know. There's, I know there's a whole list. Yeah, there's a lot of them. So, I, I know that the American I, Legion I, always No, the American sure Legion is pretty much is in charge of the, the parade thing. Yeah, the organizer. Um, okay. Um, I know they called me about an honored vet. I don't know if they found one, so mm -hmm. I'll probably find out that day mm -hmm. um, if they do or not. So I noticed you got that. I know we're gonna have the high school, all the kids and, and the Cub Scouts and just everybody else. There's like a whole barrage of people through the community yeah. here for the parade. And you've lived here a long time, right? I have. All right, how long has this Memorial Parade been going on? Well, I've been on this department 28 years. It's been going on that long. <laughs> and I've lived here almost 40, 40 years. So it's been at least 40 years that I've been here. Okay, uh, <laughs> I've seen, this I've is done. a tradition. So it's, it is a tradition. Excellent. You know, it's just great to see the citizens that, they come from everywhere to come and line the streets. Yeah. Yes. You know? All right. You out in the audience, do you have any? Uh, you have any questions? I'd like to add something uh, yeah. to that, which Todd mm -hmm. might not know about. But the American Legion added in a bike parade this year. Okay. Oh so wow! We're going to have, uh, as a matter of fact, I just talked to Susie about it this morning because I, I don't have time to be a judge, but uh, Bridge Singer and uh, Jim Newell. And Susie from the DEA will help judge the bikes at Blanche Sims. Oh my at, gosh. Uh, 10 30. Okay. Then, all right, so if you couldn't hear that, there's going to be a bike parade added to the event this year, and there will be local judges. Um, they'll be judged and awarded before they are in the parade, so everyone will be able to see their ribbons um, as they bike their way through. So that's exciting. I'm glad. Yeah, that's cool. really fun. That's something new. Yeah. See, so it's always growing. Yes. The community's always growing. Right. Absolutely. All right, what's what's the next thing? This okay, one? so so Jubilee? basically after that would be the Jubilee. Um, 
Oh, these are horrible maps, but these are what we so have. The Jubilee is basically through the 21st through the 25th. I think on the 21st is a Wednesday. They'll start setting up on Wednesday. The, it actually starts on Thursday um, at noon. So it should be the 22nd and runs still through Sunday. Um, same thing, we'll shut down the whole downtown area with barricades. So all the intersections are all completely 100% shut off in the downtown area. So this, the carnival rides could be on the streets and the vendors. Uh, parking lots will be open. Um, certain, certain parking lots will be open. Uh, you have events down in Children's Park uh, parking lot, which will be closed for their beer tent and things like that. Um, but the Slater Street parking lot will be open. And okay. uh, the Eamon Center parking lots will be used. The school admin administration buildings are, can be used for open parking mm -hmm. and things like that. We just don't allow anybody to park on our streets because we got to get emergency vehicles through. So if you come downtown and park on a side street, please park to the far right off the road as far as possible. As close to the sidewalk as yeah, you as can. close to the sidewalk. That strip of grass is considered right away. That is village owned property. You're allowed to park on those on that green strip of grass. So in front of houses. In front of homes, that is totally legal. The homeowner does not own that adjacent piece of property. That is right considered right 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 away and you can park there. Okay, and then there's also there's also parking on um, off of Perry Street by the baseball, yep. uh, and there's by the baseball diamonds, and also the DPW yard on the back side of Diamond Two. There's a, all open parking over there as well. Okay, all right, and the trolley will be running. You can park and enjoy yourself in Oxford, and then come down and enjoy the Jubilee, and then go back. So don't forget the, about the trolley, and tell your customers about the trolley because this is about you businesses. So what we have here are um, all of the parking lots on Anderson Street are closed, yes. starting on Wednesday. Thir Thursday. Starting on Thursday, mm -hmm. they're all closed, um, and the ones on. Yeah. Slater Street or? That one's going to be open. Slater Street will be completely open. So okay, so behind Fork and Pine and behind 313. Those are open as well. 313 is open and behind Fork and Pine is open. Yep. Okay. Village Hall, those, that's a parking lot as well. That's open to the public. Even though we have police cars there, that's still open to the public. Okay. And then all There's of... There's no parking under the carport. That's for the police cars. <laughs> okay. Um, all of the rides and games and stuff will be right through um, yeah. the center of town. Correct. Broadway, front to Shedbolt and Flint, Lipier Street to Anderson? Anderson, correct. Yep. Okay. All right. Is there anything? Do you have another question? Yeah. No. <clears throat> also, the parking lot at Lipier Street and Elizabeth Street. Yes. Okay. Across from, yeah, from the, the old high school. Center, the old That's high school. Open That's open to the public as yeah. well. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Okay. And then we're, I'm sorry, were we going to make that a trolley stop as well? It won't be this no. time, no. No. Um, all right. And then the Jubilee, that is run by the Lions Club? By the Lions Club. Right. And you've been here a long time. How yes. long has this Jubilee been happening? I, my recollection, my whole 40 years yeah. of being here, yeah. it's been going on there. So I think the history is almost 80 years or, or longer. Huge history of the Jubilee being in downtown. And yes, we were a smaller downtown when we first started doing this. Um, and now we're a busier downtown, um, but it's still a tradition. Um, it still uh, harkens back to why downtown Lake Orion is even here. We started out as an amusement park and a resort town. Um, that's how Lake Orion was built. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just that's every right. year, the Lions Club honors that history. Yes. We had a question. Yes. So are there fireworks included as, as part of the, the, the Jubilee Lake and Pass Days or are the fireworks separate okay. from the Jubilee? Okay, there's going to be no fireworks from the Jubilee this year. Um, like there's normally would be on that Saturday we would have some. There's no fireworks this year except for the Lake Association. The Fireworks Association is doing some on the following Saturday, which July is July, July 1st. Just one, fireworks Just one set of fireworks mm -hmm. this year, yes. Thank you. One beautiful set of fireworks. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was wonderful last year. Yes, oh. they, they're always great. They do always do a great show. All right, so parking lots are shut down starting on Thursday. On, on Thursday. Starting on Thursday, and they open up again. On Sunday at 5 o'clock. Sunday, 5 o'clock. All right, and then roads. Okay, the roads, when you're coming down on Flint Street here, they'll be shut off at Anderson. And basically, you'll be detoured to go north up to Shadbolt. You can take Shadbolt back to M24 or as far as Lapeer Street, and you can come back south to back to Flint and go back out the traffic light if you wish. 
Uh, and then also it'll be shut down downtown uh, just at Front Street, uh, which is right there by Lucky's. Coming north, all the way to Shadbolt. So we can call that like our four corners. So it's basically one block north, one block east, one block south, one block to the east of our traffic light. Okay. And is that all based on, um, I'm sorry, does that start Wednesday? Do they have to set up starting on? They'll start setting up on at noon on Wednesday. On Wednesday. And we'll start okay. shutting things down. Okay. So our roads start getting They'll start compromised. Getting shutting, yes. Wednesday. So Wednesday they'll start being compromised. So as, as they start bringing equipment in, we'll start shutting them down. We'll try to keep these roads open as long as we can. Right. To accommodate everybody going yeah. to and from where they're coming, you know, home or work or just traveling. Um, but as the rides come in, the bigger rides, we'll mm -hmm. start shutting stuff down. So we'll work with the carnival. Okay. All right. And um, you can tell your customers on Wednesday that they need to be prepared to park um, further out and walk in. Um, but that isn't any reason for them not to come by. <laughs> and um, if you if you remember, um, the Jubilee kind of has a tendency, um, all of their big gigantic um, uh, boxes, you know, their, their food trucks and their uh, toys, not toy. Let me use the midway them. games. Their games, yeah, their games. They're all kind of facing in and they have a tendency to block your storefront and your store. So, um, think about the things that you can do. Um, get kids out on roller skates, passing out stuff. Um, do think about what you can have out by your door so you can attract attention. There are going to be people who don't want to be in the middle of the crowds. They're going to try to use the sidewalks. You need to catch their attention and do what you can um, to get people in. We've got a ton of yeah, trip them. We've got a ton of people coming into town. So let's figure out what we can do to get them in your store. Um, and Susie is here. We are going to do, um, the DDA is going to do a scavenger hunt on that day, on the first, the first um, day of the Jubilee, just to kind of get people excited about coming um, to the, to the uh, Jubilee itself, but also getting them into your stores. So if she has not contacted you and you'd like to be involved, please let us know. But it's, it's going to be a scavenger hunt. It'll have our beacons. Um, we'll have, you know, people walking around with pool noodles and there's, a prize. and there's prizes to be won so you can tell your customers about it. Um, so more details from Susie. Um, contact her if you're interested. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments about Jubilee? Yeah, about, um, more shops this way. Are you... All right. Um, when, when there is a road closure, um, at the end of Broadway, um, at the intersection of 20 fr uh, Front Street, at the intersection there, we now have a banner that says more shopping, dining, and entertainment this way. And that's something that we're hoping to just keep standard anytime there's a road closure, just so people are aware that your stores are there. Okay. All right. Okay. What's next? Car show. Okay. So, yeah, so then we have the, the car show. The car show is on basically July 30th. It's just a one-day event. It'll start about 6 o'clock in the morning. It'll run to like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So we shut down basically just north and south Broadway and east and west Flint. So basically, again, the four corners. So our basic footprint. Our basic footprint, one block from the traffic light, one block north, one block south, east and west from the traffic light. Uh, the car show is one day, um, which is pretty nice. If you have old cars, bring them down. You know, or walk around and enjoy them. Uh, we are looking at probably doing uh, a pancake breakfast. Uh, still trying to work on the details, possibly at Anita's Kitchen. Uh, all the money that we collect basically goes for that. Uh, we'll go to charity. We'll go to the Kids and Cops program to help benefit the kids uh, at Blant Sims uh, for the events that we hold there in the wintertime. You know? Yeah, our police department puts in a lot of effort of creating relationships with our youth. Um, to kind of um, take away the, the stigma of right. the police being big bad guys. If, I mean, if they're playing basketball with you and um, yep. face painting, then they can't be that bad, right? Yeah, floor hockey, everything we do with the kids is great. It's great. Yeah, and it's, um, that's a, an added um, benefit that our community has that we wouldn't have if we didn't have our police department. Yeah. And just last year alone, we had over 200 kids sign up for that program mm -hmm. on our Friday night, so it was... Kind of little mayhem with 200 wow. kids, but we had lucky. We had, you know, great officers that volunteered their time and come sit there for several hours to play with these kids and interact with them. So 
maybe mom and dad can go maybe have dinner alone Aww. you know come downtown and have dinner yeah. you know while we're playing with their kids at the school in the gym or the cafeteria wherever mm -hmm. uh, so it's a pretty good event the parents look forward to it every year so is, so is the kids Nice. So this car show helps fund that. And that program. car show helps fund that whole program for us, yes. Nice. All right. And it's going to be Saturday, um, July what? 30th. Yeah. Another opportunity for a sidewalk sale, guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then? Then we have the Brave the Wave. Okay. Brave the Wave. Okay. So Brave Wave is August 5th. That's the jet ski races that's on the, on the lake. That's just a one-day event. Uh, where uh, basically we don't shut anything downtown down at all because everything takes place over at Greens Park over there on the lake. Uh, if you have boats, come out there and watch them. Uh, those guys are pretty good between the races and the, and the tricks they do. And they have some small kids to adults that participate in an all day's event. So it's a pretty nice thing to watch. Um, just so you know that we do have some world class jet skiers that live here in Lake Orion that go on the circuit. So it's pretty nice that we have those kind of professionals and pro wow. athletes here that live here in this town. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. All right. Does that close down any roads? No roads closures for the for Brave the Wave. All right. Um, is Greens Park closed? Greens, for, Par to Greens the Park is open to the public. Oh, it is? It okay. is. Nice. Okay. Just parking will be because we can try to make all the vendors park somewhere else just so we can have that parking lot open for the handicap only. Mm -hmm. on that day so if you're handicapped we'll just try to spare make those spare parking spaces for them only okay so you just have to find parking other people have to find parking on the streets okay and then um going back to the fireworks july 1st mm -hmm. um is greens park open greens park will be open okay. and uh i don't know if they're going to do like they normally do usually they charge you a couple dollars to get in to watch them so it's yeah that's not part of my decision making that's someone right. else's right that's someone else's um i did watch the village council meeting though so i know that it's going to be five dollar pass for families and a dollar okay. for single entry and that is in addition to whatever you your day pass your season pass when you leave the park you have to leave the park um and come back yeah. after eight o'clock and you pay to get into greens park but it's a great view of the fireworks yes it's a great they, place to see the fireworks. They, um, I want you to know the village council discussed whether or not they should raise those rates, and they decided that they wanted to make sure that it was open for everybody. So they kept the rates exactly the same um, because of their um, caring concern for all of you yep. <laughs> and all of your customers. Or if not, if you don't want to sit in the park, you can sit on the other side of M24 on the grass area by AutoZone mm. and things like that because that's open to the public as well. We'll, 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 we'll tape it off with caution tape to keep you off. Safe, the safe, safe from distance the from the highway. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. What if you come by boat and you use the dock at Greens Park? I don't know how many new dock, how many docks did we put in? They just put in six new docks at the end of the season. At Greens Park. At Greens Park, there's there six more some more docks there. Basically, the rules still apply. It's a two-hour limit. Okay, so, so are those and those fences get locked at? The gates, we leave the gates now open, so if, you use, if you're a boater and you park your boat at the public dock, you can come and go as you wish. Okay. So you don't need a park pass to enter the park from the boat or to, okay. to get to your boat. All right, so I've, I've had questions about that. Okay. People that want to go out to dinner or whatever. Yep. And, okay. okay, yeah, we leave, the gate, the gate is there. unlocked now just for those new docks so you can come and go as you please. Okay, all right. But you need a pass to park at the docks? Yes, yeah. and you get that village yeah, pass at the village hall, and it's a yearly annual pass, yeah. and you got to fix it to the front of your boat, is what the, the rules state, so when the officer looks at it, he can see it. Okay. Okay, so after the Brave of the Wave, then we have Dragon on the Lake. So that's August 24th through the 27th. Again, our downtown district will be shut down with the same footprint. Mm -hmm. From the traffic light, one block north, south, east, and west, for that, for all the events, for uh, the vendors, chalk, chalk drawing, people in, in the spaces through downtown. So the whole downtown district will be shut off. Um, are the parking lots closed? No parking lots should be closed except for well, you got a beer tent. I'm sorry, take it back. The beer tent down in Children's Park will be closed, and I think the, what we call the Whiskey's lot. Okay. Uh, just north of Front Street there in the corner of Anderson. So the two main so the parking two main, lots on two main Anderson parking lots Street. will be closed. The Art Center's 
parking lot is open, the Slater Street parking lot's open, yes. and the one uh, at the corner of Anderson and Flint. Flint, yes, the is movie, open. which we call the Park Center, the gravel parking lot, correct. And that would be open. And, and of all course, of the... 313 would be open, behind Fork and Pints open, the school admin building parking lot, things like that, Village Hall parking lot. Okay, so that's what you need to tell your customers when they're coming to visit you. Those are the parking lots that are open, and they should try to avoid um, Children's Park and Anderson yes, Street. Yes, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Yes. Okay, and when does this? When does the? When do the parking lots get shut down, and when does the road get shut down? Okay, so on August twenty fourth, we'll start shutting stuff down about five thirty in the morning. So okay. we'll we'll do that downtown square uh, intersection. We'll start shutting those down by before six o'clock in the morning. Is that Thursday? Um, I have to look at a calendar. So if it's a th the twenty fourth. So, yeah, so it so should be, it'll be Thursday night, it should be Friday morning. Okay. Okay. All right. And that's and that's both the roads and the parking lots? Everything gets closed at yes. the same time? Yes. All right. And then it's open when? It'll open up on Sunday at 5 o'clock. Sunday at 5. Okay. All right. Are there any questions about Dragon on the Lake? All right. This is run by the Art Center. Um, yes, how is. long has this been happening, this event? Dragon Lake's probably been going on probably maybe a little over 10 years now, I believe. Okay. So it's still, it's, it's, it's a great event. It goes, especially if you're a rower, yes. you know, for, you know, Dragon Lake. So it's, you know, that's a great thing. So, you know, you try to find 20 of your friends, 18 of yes. your friends, and you make a team and you yeah. row. But it does bring a lot of people here to town just to watch the racers. So it does, it's yeah. a beautiful event. Well, and I know in the past they've had teams coming from Bay City. Oh, they come from, from all Canada, over. Yes. And yeah, it uh, brings you know, a lot they, of attention. Everywhere. To the Even brand. with the jet skiers, I've met some people that have come from Europe for the jet skis. Wow. It was crazy that, that they compete and they come this far. So Lake Orion is becoming on their jet ski circuit a pretty, pretty known lake, you know, wow. you know, in an event. Nice. Nice. All right. Any questions about Dragon on the Lake? Okay, what's next? Okay, so then the next one would be basically the Oktoberfest. Um, and we're not doing Oktoberfest so, this okay, year. Okay, so that's just on my calendar because we've had them in the past. The next one would be the homecoming parade would be in October. I don't have the official date from the school yet when they're going to do this parade. Okay. But same thing, it's just like a normal, just like the Memorial Day parade would be the exact same footprint let, street closures. It would be, you know, uh, East Flint. Mm -hmm. All the way up to uh, Broadway, and then Broadway all the way up to Elizabeth Street. Okay. So it's the same footprint that we follow as the Memorial Day Parade, and the same thing. They start at Blanche Sims, they come down Florence. And it Florence. doesn't stay shut the whole time. It's just kind of it's, shut. It's just till the end of the parade is how we the police do it. As soon as the end of the parade clears the intersection, we open up that intersection. So as soon as they pass the officer, the officer opens up the intersection. This way, it just helps out get traffic out as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. But we try to do it systematically so it's still safe for everybody to, so to do travel. You keep Flint Street open until the start of it, so you like block off the ends, and then how do you do that? Yes, just before, just 15 minutes before the parade starts, we'll shut down Flint Street. So usually we have an officer that's coordinating with the parade group, uh, or whoever's in charge there at the, for even for the parade group or the homecoming. So when they said they're ready, then we just announce on the radio, start shutting down your intersection. So we leave the streets open as long as we possibly can. And it's usually, like I said, within the last 15 minutes, we'll start shutting stuff down. And then as the parade go, moves through its route, when it passes an officer, the end of the parade passes the officer, the last patrol car, usually we have a tail car. As soon as that car passes an officer's intersection, we'll open that intersection up. Nice. Okay. So then after the homecoming parade, then it's everybody's favorite. The Christmas parade. <laughs> so that's going to be on December 2nd. So it's almost the same footprint as like all the other parades, except when we add one extra street into this closure. So when we come down East Flint Street, we'll, we'll head south down Anderson, over to Front Street, then west on Front Street, back to Broadway, and then come back up broad, North Broadway, all the way through the rest of town to all the way down to Elizabeth Street. So we add that extra little uh, one block closure. Just for this, because the parade's so large, we just need to get one extra block of, of floats moving. Um, that's the largest parade that I think the village has through the whole year, the event. It's, um, not only is it the largest parade that we have, it is the largest um, 
lighted, lighted parade, parade in, the, in Michigan. In the state of Michigan. Yeah. Um, some people would say east of the Mississippi. <laughs> yes, it is the largest yeah. lighted lighted parade in the state of Michigan. So correct. that kind of changes. That kind of changes what happens with the parade route because there's so many people who come in. Yes. So yeah. it's just you know that extra one little block. Sometimes it's more of a little more of a headache for people because now the other parking lots, the children's parking lot, and the whiskey's parking lot is closed during the time of the parade. And again, we shut those down at the last minute. Oh, so, they get shut down last minute too? So we'll have okay. signs posted ahead of time saying this parking lot will be closed from six to eight while the parade is in routes. So you can park there, you just won't be able to exit if the parade is in route. Okay. So if the parade is moving, you're not gonna be able to get out. So you're gonna have that one, probably that two hour window that you're stuck in the parking lot. Okay, what about the road closure, um, specifically like at Front Street and Broadway? When okay. is that one? Okay, same thing, we'll shut everything like those down. Well, because we'll have the stage, the, the stage there um, yeah. at Front and Broadway there. We'll probably shut them down usually that day. That day? So just that one intersection to protect that stage as much as we can. Sometimes we can get it over to the side more than others. Sometimes we can't, depending on how they deliver it. Okay, so, so when it gets here, that's when the road gets shut down. Yeah. Okay, all right. And again, um, as I mentioned before, we do have a banner that goes right on the road closure um, barricade saying there's more shopping and dining and entertainment this direction. Yep, yep that's correct. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much right. for your time. Well, I appreciate you, you coming here. Um, the last question I have for you is for business owners, what can they do to help uh, protect and guard over the safety of the public during these events? Are there, well, is there anything you want them to do? Try to leave no cords across the sidewalk, don't, you know, so you don't create a trip hazard mm -hmm. if you got something plugged in or tables in the right, you know, in the right of way where you, so handicapped people can get through, okay. things like that. Just try to keep the sidewalk as open as possible. Okay. You know, and just for safety, just kind of just be aware of your surroundings. If you see something that's not a little suspicious to you, please just call the police, let us investigate it. And how do you want them to call you? 911? Yeah, they just call this our regular police line there on 693-8321, talk to the dispatcher and they'll, they'll dispatch an officer. And usually on these events, there's, you know, I got 25 officers here on that day. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm going to get an officer to you probably within a minute or less. So there's going to be an officer somewhere around your business that can assist you. Okay. And what kinds of things um, would you feel would be suspicious behavior? Well, if you see a package that maybe someone's left behind, please don't approach it. Just let a professional look at it and make that determination. Uh, things like that. Okay. Um, we want to make sure everybody's safe. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, so really right now, just with everything else that's going on in the world, there's just uh, maybe a suspicious backpack. Please call us. That's the best thing. Just if something doesn't feel like, if you guys have a funny feeling in your stomach, just let us look at it. Okay. Let us make a determination what it is. Okay, all right. And um, let's talk about things that have happened elsewhere, which, um, which has an effect on how, you, how Lake Orion mm -hmm. treats public safety. Mm -hmm. um, like Waukesha, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. um, that's where we had a, somebody was, they were doing a parade and somebody, a, a driver Drives ran right in, right? Well, through our, so like I said, we try to protect the public as much as we can with barricades. Uh, things like for the Christmas parade down here at Front Street in Anderson, I'll have a dump truck, a large DPW truck there just to protect the stage and protect anybody coming through North Broadway traffic to, just so they don't enter our parade routes. And like I said, all the other intersections, I have officers with barricades. Some will be on cars, some will be on ATVs, some will be on motorcycles. So there's something a hard, some type of hard barrier to make it more hard to get through that yeah. intersection. Than a, a traffic cone. Okay. So then you have an officer there to assist if something happens, the description of a vehicle, or assist any type of aid if something happens. Okay. And then uh, there was a situation in Berkeley um, just a few weeks ago where they had to shut down their festival because they were concerned for safety. Um, I believe it was a group of teenagers who were getting yeah. riled up, right? Yes. Is that? It I don't think it's a concern here, here often, but. because we have so much heavy officer presence. I don't yeah. think that element is going to want to see because wherever you're looking, you're going to see an officer somewhere. Yeah. Figure every block there's going to be an officer yeah. standing around, walking around, or, or just driving around. So uh, not that nothing can happen here, mm -hmm. but, but I think with the heavy police presence that we're going to give you, it's, you're going to be totally safe. Okay. Anybody else have questions for police chief? 
Thank you Thank for you. coming. We appreciate all of your information. Um, this has been recorded so that we can share it with the rest of the business owners who weren't able to come today, and I appreciate your time. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Molly. You guys have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you. Come to Lake Orion and watch the events. Yes. <laughs>